Welcome to Dental XP. I'm Dr. Maurice Salama, and today I'm going to be highlighting a case in which we utilized a non metallic option for tooth replacement. A zirconium implant system, Z Systems, is going to be utilized to treat a patient with a history of metallic allergies. A zirconium gives us an option to provide the patient with a non titanium option for tooth replacement. This patient suffered a loss of a maxillary left canine and a bone graft in this area provided us with enough augmentation to place a dental implant to replace this tooth. Because of the deficiency in ker keratinized tissue and ridge thickness, a connective tissue graft was harvest harvested from the patient's maxillary left palatal region. Once this tissue was taken, we went ahead and bone sounded the area clinically to ascertain the location of the underlying bony crest. This is very important on the adjacent natural teeth, which also showcase some previous recession. As you can see, the soft tissue graft, connective tissue, autogenous in nature, will be utilized simultaneously to assist us in augmentation of the adjacent natural teeth, as well as the buccal concavity remaining in the area of the dental implant. A zirconium, or zirconium oxide scalpel is utilized. This patient was very clear to us to avoid the utilization, when possible, of any metallic instrumentation of stainless steel or even titanium. A zirconium blade here is utilized to make the sulcular incision and approach to gain access to the recipient site. Crestal palatal incision is utilized to split the keratinized tissue to make sure that we have keratinized tissue on both the buccal and palatal aspects. Circular, circumferential, sulcular incisions are then utilized around the, the lateral incisor and the first bicuspid. A zirconium periosteal elevator is then utilized to assist in the reflection of the buccal flap. Once again, this patient's desire to not have metal uh, utilized as part of the surgical process allowed us to use the Z-Systems zirconium instrument kit as part of our treatment. A superperiosteal dissection with the zirconium blade was then performed to allow us to gain reflection of the tissue to proceed with the placement of the implant as well as the soft tissue graft. The initial round burr was utilized to locate the precise mesial distal and buccal lingual position of the future zirconium implant. Z Systems offers us the option of zirconium drills as well as zirconium instrumentation so that the entire process can be performed without the utilization of any metallic instrumentation. Once again, for many of our patients, this is quite important. The twist drills, again, made of zirconium, they cut extremely well, allow us to instrument the area with sharp cutting surface, and the drills perform extremely well, as you can see on the video. We go down to approximately 13 millimeters, keeping the implant towards the palate, and then utilize the countersink drill, as you can see here, which is extremely important to locate the platform of the implant. A bone tap is then utilized, made of zirconium, to thread the inner aspects of the bone for the future placement of the implant. And as you can see here, once the bone tap is utilized, we can then back it out very slowly, and now we have an ideal implant recipient site and osteotomy prepared and you can see on higher magnification, the threads have now been cut. This is through the microscope at eight times magnification. Very nice bleeding crestal threads that have been etched in the bone utilizing the zirconium bone tap. The Z-Look 3 dental zirconium oxide implant system is utilized. This is FDA approved in the U.S. And this is the implant as it's being removed. This is the abutment, and this is the cartridge and carrier that is utilized to place the implant 
and it's a very easy system. You can see no contact is made with the gloves and right from the carrier and the packaging, it goes directly into the mouth. A pure zirconium implant is then inserted. Following the bone tapping of the threads, we get excellent initial stability of the implant and you can see the collar of the future canine is placed right at the shoulder, even with the adjacent buccal margins of the adjacent natural teeth. This is a one-piece implant, so the abutment and the implant body are connected as one piece. And then we're going to locate the connective tissue graft to enhance the thickness of the tissue on both the implant site and the adjacent natural teeth. The zirconium implant has a shoulder that allows us to prepare it if needed, as well as a length of occlusal area that we are going to reduce after suturing. We are now going to locate the connective tissue graft to allow for augmentation, and we are going to utilize 5-0 nylon sutures. The zirconium implant is going to be used in a method to help us anchor our graft just underneath the buccal margin. So it will assist us during the suturing to locate the graft ideally for the future preparation of the implant and the final aesthetic margin. Vertical mattress suture individual is utilized to secure the graft. As you can see, slight piece of the graft on the facial aspect of the maxillary left lateral incisor and then once again on the distal aspect of the implant securing it with vertical mattress interrupted sutures. We're going to utilize in this case a sling mattress vertical suture which utilizes the lingual of the bicuspid to sling the suture around and give ourselves the ability to press that tissue up against the facial aspect of the implant site. So we have now with two vertical mattress sutures been able to secure the graft in its proper position. A final suture is now utilized just to reposition the distal aspect of the soft tissue and to give us a very nice and tight adaptation of the overlying flap and the underlying connective tissue graft. The area is irrigated, the excessive soft tissue is excised, and this allows us now to have a better adaptation of the remaining soft tissue. We don't want too much of the soft tissue hiked up above the margin of the zirconium abutment. Now we have a very nice adaptation on high magnification. You can see the nylon sutures in place and irrigation, the connective tissue graft, add the adaption of the connective tissue stabilized underneath the buccal flap on both the adjacent teeth and the implant site. On the x-ray, you can see a very, very good and precise fit of the implant to the surrounding bone. While the implant is going to be reduced in terms of height and slightly prepared to make sure that there's no early contact, a lab model was fabricated to assist us in a transitional appliance being made that will protect the implant during the healing phase. This is very important in the way we use it as a quick setting stone poured up the day the patient arrives prior to the surgery and waxing up of the undercuts is then facilitated. A denture tooth is placed onto the model and going to assist us in the fabrication of a Essex tooth borne transitional removable appliance. This is extremely important to block out the undercuts with wax and we're going to be utilizing Essex which is a material from Rain Tree, a subsidiary of Densply, Tulsa. So we're using Essex plastics and a vacuum form machine to have a suck down matrix 
and we're going to use the 035 material which allows us to get very very nice adaptation and good fit and excellent aesthetics for a tooth replacement. This is then trimmed in the lab. Different tips can be utilized. All these tips are made available through the Dentsply Rain Tree Division and these then allow us to remove any of the sharp edges of the vacuform matrix. A shade is then selected and allows us to use the same shaded acrylic to then fill in the area of the missing tooth. And this can be done with packable resin or composite material. So this really allows us to create a shell of adequate color and it's very important once this is light cured that we hollow out the denture tooth to make sure that it is not loading the implant abutment at all during the healing phase. It's very important that there is no contact between the underside of the implant abutment and the Essex retainer. We reduce the adapter on the abutment. This was utilized to ratchet down the implant and then the reduction allows us now good occlusal clearance for future tooth replacement and also to make sure that there is no early contact with the hollowed out provisional tooth in the Essex retainer. I'd like to thank you for spending some time with us today on the utilization of zirconium implants in dental tooth replacement and I look forward to part two of this case which will highlight the preparation of the zirconium abutment, impression taking techniques, and temporization, as well as final restoration. Once again, thank you from Dental XP. This is Dr. Maurice Salama.